Well, we hear you loud and clear. Good, good morning. I think I'm a little hot back there. <laughs> I did a sound check too. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? <laughs> Boy, can we hear you? How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Lent. Look at all the shiny, bright faces for Lent. Are we here? We go. Well, uh, God's blessings to you. Are we live? Oh, we got audio. They can hear me and see me. Sorry. Good morning. Good to see all of you online. Welcome as we as we start our first Sunday of the Lenten season, 2021. What an incredible time of year this is. And to that, everybody that walked in should have received one of these. These are the Lenten devotionals. It actually starts. It's a daily devotional that started on Ash Wednesday. We have one printed up for everybody in the church, or if you need an extra for a friend or a family member or a co-worker, please, by all means, take one. When you go out of the sanctuary, hang a left. And those online, if you can't make it, give us a call or an email, and we will mail you one. These are really cool. Um, so it's just a way to be in God's word every day. So, so please, uh, pick up your devotional on your way out. So we have a couple of brief announcements this morning. We are looking for uh, volunteers for our Sunday school. Uh, unfortunately, for the next two weeks, our Sunday school teacher will not be here. Here, her family is uh, has COVID, so she's under quarantine, so she won't be here. She's doing good, but uh, so we do need people to help with Sunday school. And uh, I also want to make mention fe Saturday, February 27th, at three o'clock in our fellowship hall. This is really important. We need volunteers for the golf outing. Uh, so if, and you don't have to know anything about golf, just so I have to just show up and, and say hello to people and we'll tell you and show you what you need to do. But so this uh, Saturday, February 27th, we're gonna have a meeting. Um, so please come to that. If you can't come, but you still wanna volunteer, please uh, let us know and we'll uh, make sure that you get signed up. And the, the golf fundraiser is on May 3rd. So if you want to play golf, uh, just call it the church office and set up. It's going to be a blast. It's, uh, the golf course is just down the street. I, I'm drawing a blank on the name. Anybody remember the name? Strand. Strand. Nobody remembers. <laughs> confirmation sign up. If you have children or you know children that are at confirmation age, that's 6th, uh, 7th, 8th grade, or even older, let us know. We are putting together our confirmation class for 2021, so please give us a call. Um, and also, you may have heard uh, some piano playing from my right over here. And no, honey didn't get a haircut. <laughs> I would like to introduce to you Tom Chimarusti. Tom, please stand up. Welcome, Tom. I, I should say Dr. Tom. Uh, Tom has his PhD in music. He is a professor at the Florida Gulf Coast University. And Tom has accepted the call to come here and be our new worship leader. And we are so grateful. So with this, Tom is going to be connecting us with a lot of the, the youth at the Florida Gulf Coast University. We're starting a new um, a youth ministry. And I'll talk about that at a later date. It's very exciting. So, Tom, we are just so blessed. And let us pray for you, because you're going to need it here, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing Tom to us. Uh, Lord, we just pray that him, his wife Christy, and his family would just feel so comfortable here, Lord, that you would just bless them. We thank you, Lord, for the talent and the gifts that you have given him to play music and to worship you. So thank you, Lord. We ask for your blessings on Tom and the ministry of the music here, that it'll touch the hearts of all. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. You know what? That would be a good segue into the opening song. <laughs> what do you say? We rise and we worship our Lord in our opening song. It is well within our soul.
In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was tempted in every way, yet without sin, we confess before you that we have sinned. We have hungered after that which does not satisfy. We have compromised with evil. We have doubted your power to protect us. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Restore us in such a life of trust that we may walk in your ways and life Friends, the wonderful news this morning is yes, we are sinners. Then no, that's not the wonderful news. The wonderful news is that we are forgiven. Because our Lord has promised if we are faithful to confess, He is faithful to forgive. So it is a wonderful privilege and an honor to announce the grace of God unto all of you that in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Today's reading is from the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And as the sand on the seashore, your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The New Testament reading is from James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. 
Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. There is a slight variance in the readings this morning. The, uh, the reading that's in the bulletin is actually not the, uh, the gospel reading today. Uh, I accidentally sent Whitney the wrong gospel reading. So we have a different gospel reading this morning, more in line with the message. So if you are able, please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. We'll be uh, in Matthew chapter 4. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is going to be the basis for the message today. This is the account that happened immediately after Jesus had gone to John in the Jordan River and Jesus was baptized. And at that point, if you recall, the Holy Spirit descended upon our Lord as a dove and a voice from heaven proclaimed, Jesus is the Son of God. And then Jesus was led into the wilderness by, uh, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand in the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day, when I survey the wondrous cross.
Father, you have a love that is so amazing. A love that we can't even comprehend. You have reached down this morning and touched us with your grace and your mercy. You have called us together to hear your word. So Lord, open up our hearts and our minds to your wonderful word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once again, good morning and welcome. Hello to everyone online. What a wonderful day as we are starting a journey together. A journey together. You have your uh, Lenten devotionals and uh, those online, we're going to get these to you right away. We start this morning a 40-day uh, a journey. A 40-day journey because today is the first Sunday in Lent. What an incredible time of year for, to, to be a believer. We are going to have more opportunities over the next couple months to share the grace of God, the love of God, than we, than we probably ever will. And I just, I just pray that when you are in those situations, that God will give you the words. He has promised that his Holy Spirit will just lead us right to what to say. We may stumble, we may be afraid, and we may be tempted to just not say anything. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start our lesson this morning, start our Lenten season off through Matthew's Gospel. I, I read it uh, a moment ago. So if you brought your Bibles, you might want to get a little jump on the, the lesson here this morning, Matthew chapter 4, because this is one of those one of those incredible stories of the earthly life and the earthly ministry of Jesus that is just packed full of, well, valuable lessons. Valuable lessons that, that can inspire us through this next 40 days of our Lenten journey and help us in our walk of faith. And the fact that this story occurs at the same point in the life of Jesus in all four Gospels begs us to take note, to really... I don't know, just listen with deep interest. But before we get into the reading, let me just set the stage for you. As I said a little bit ago, this, is, this takes place right after Jesus was baptized. Before he begins his ministry on this earth, he goes to John the Baptist where he is baptized in the Jordan River. And we are told when Jesus was baptized that the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And a voice from heaven proclaimed, this is my son, and in him I am well pleased. Now, isn't it interesting that immediately after his baptism, after the Holy Spirit descended upon him, the Spirit, I don't know, leads Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days, where he endures the temptation of, from the devil. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but wouldn't you think that, that right after he received God's spirit, that, that he heard the voice from heaven proclaiming that he is God's beloved son, affirming his identity, that this would, I don't know, lead Jesus to be excited and, and have peace and joy to immediately begin his earthly ministry. Now, that's what I would think, wouldn't anyway, you know. Um, but it didn't happen that way. Because so often, God's plan is really different than our plan. Have you noticed that in your life? <laughs> yeah, once or twice, right? But see, just like in us, his baptism prepared Jesus for the journey that was about to take place. Because in his humanity, like us, Jesus was confronted by the tempter, a.k.a. the devil. The tempter's goal in this was to turn Jesus away from the Spirit's guidance that he would no longer walk in harmony with the Father. This suggests to me that those of us that who have received God's wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit in our own baptism, that we might, you know, well, we might also expect to encounter temptation 
on our faith journey. Anybody else besides me ever been tempted on something? Maybe? No? Is it just me? Oh, you were? Okay, so that's two of us. But I've got to be honest here. If the Spirit is present in our lives, encouraging us to take up our cross and follow Jesus, you will experience temptation. Temptation is unavoidable. Because to follow Jesus, friends, it will often put you at odds against the world, against those very close to you. So let's open up our Bibles. Let's dive right into this. Matthew chapter 4. If you brought your Bibles, uh, please open up the Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. If you don't, your, your uh, bulletin is not going to do you any good because Mark's gospel is in there. And, and again, at any time, if you want to take a screenshot with your phone of something up here, feel free to do so. Because this is our gospel reading. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he'd be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If, if, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you would not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms in the world. And all of this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. You know, Jesus at this point has pretty much had enough. And he says, you're out of here. So what we see right away in this reading, that the first temptation is so subtle that most people don't even see it. Now, I emphasized it. Because it is so small, so subtle. In fact, it's just two little letters. If, if, most people, it goes unnoticed. The tempter says, if you are the son of God. Now remember, Jesus had, had just come from his baptism. He had just received God's Holy Spirit. And he had heard the voice proclaim that he is the son of God. But now he hears Satan who is powerful, say, you know, if, if you are the son of God. See, this statement is clearly designed to lead Jesus to question the validity of what he had just experienced in his baptism. And this now begs the question to us, how often does this temptation come to the, each one of us who have received God's Holy Spirit in our own baptism. How many have been tempted to say, you know, God's not real, this isn't real? Because I'll tell you, in my life, I've had friends throughout my life, friends that perhaps aren't as far along in their faith walk as I would hope they would be, come to me and they'd say, you know, guys I've known all my life, say, you know, Mike, how do you know? How do you really know that God forgives you? How do you know that there's life after death? You know, Mike, you talk about this baptism stuff all the time. Is it really real or is it just some man-made ritual? How many of you have received questions very similar to this in your life? Because in all of these questions lies the subtle voice of the tempter calling into the question the validity of our identity as a baptized child of God. In these questions, there is the subtle voice of the tempter calling into question the legitimacy of the voice of God that is proclaimed through the scriptures that we hold on so dearly to. The voice, <laughs> the voice that assures us of God's forgiveness and life beyond the grave. 
Because, friends, at the root of temptation is planted the seed of doubt, which challenges our belief and our trust in God's word. And unless I'm alone in this, and I don't, I don't think I am, we have all wrestled with this temptation in our faith walk, haven't we? I know I have. That in, you know, yet Jesus demonstrates throughout this text, and the biggest lesson for us here today is that in his human form, God's spirit led him to trust in the word of God, and it enables him to avoid the tempter's trap. You know, there's another trap that the tempter always likes to throw at us. You know, uh, if you just had a nicer car, things would be better. You know, if you just had a better job, you know, things would, your life would be so much easier. You know, if your house was just a little bit bigger, or if that relationship, well, maybe you ought to look for... The tempter is always throwing at us to consider how bad things are. For example, consider the temptation for Jesus to use his status, his power, his authority as the Son of God to meet his own personal needs within our reading. Our text tells us that Jesus fasted for 40 days. He ate absolutely nothing for 40 days. And when those days were over, Matthew tells us in his gospel that he was famished. <laughs> There's an understatement. I miss lunch and I'm miserable. I mean, 40 days without anything. Nevertheless, the tempter says to Jesus in, in, in verse 3, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you can. I'm not sure you can, but if you can. You know, i got to believe that if Jesus could take five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people, I think he's got this one. I really do. He could have turned that stone into bread to satisfy his hunger, but he didn't. Jesus resisted the temptation to use his own relationship with the Father, his own authority, for his own personal benefit. And he did so. How? Well, here's the lesson today. If you get nothing else from the message, please get this. How did he fight this? By calling on the power of God's word. In fact, he responded to the temptation by citing a passage from Deuteronomy. God humbled you by letting you hunger in order to make you understand that, by, that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And does this temptation not tug at us today? Has not each and every person in this room or online at one time or another considered petitioning God for your own personal benefit? See, a common trick by Satan that often goes unnoticed is to dangle that carrot of power and wealth and personal success right in front of you. He even tried it here with Jesus, how he twisted scripture around to get Jesus to seek earthly power. It was a power, by the way, that many in Jesus' day they would have loved him to embrace. They would love for him to have taken advantage of this power and exercised his authority. I mean, after all, Jesus could have brought to an end the Roman occupation. He could have established peace and governed justly. But Jesus knew that all true authority and all legitimate power belongs to the Father. So again, we see the formula that Jesus used to battle evil. He resisted the tempter by quoting scripture. But then again, the tempter turns to Jesus a third time, again with the phrase, if you are the son of God. See, this time he is now trying to test Jesus' faith. He's trying to test his loyalty to the father. He takes Jesus to the top of the highest point and he dares him to jump off. And here he twists scripture by quoting Psalm 91 that, oh, the angels will take care of you. They won't let your foot hit the ground. And this passage that the tempter uses 
is, is, is not really full because Jesus saw right through this ploy and he was able to put this passage into its context. We're going to really unpack this one in the, in the Bible study afterwards. And so how does Jesus respond to this jump off the building? Well, probably one of the most famous. Do not put your Lord to the test. Now, Clearly, there is a lot of things within this reading. We could spend weeks on this reading alone. But let me just kind of bring it together as we kind of close this because I realize that each and every one of us here, myself included, we may not be able to resist every temptation that comes along. Clearly, we might even have moments of doubt when our faith is questioned. We may doubt God's word. We may doubt why we're here. The test of our faith is to live that Christian life. But we must remember, friends, we must remember, we have been baptized into Christ Jesus and his resurrection, and we too have been given the gift of God's Holy Spirit in our lives, which can guide us through these rough stages of our lives. We have the scriptures. We have God's holy word. Isn't that right, Chuck? Hangs on to it tightly. God's word. There's also something else, friends, as you look around. Just for one second, just look to your left and look to your right. And see those people next to you, around you? The participation of Jesus' church right here. See, we are not left to our own defenses. We have the support of those around us, who, those who we share our faith with. And I can, you know, the body of Christ, and I can attest to this because this week I was struggling. And I called two brothers in this church and asked them to pray for me. And I cannot tell you the comfort and the peace that gave me. So friends, let us together take up our cross and strive to walk with Christ throughout this Lenten season, these next 40 days. For God has claimed us as his own, heirs of his kingdom, and no one, not the tempter, nor life, nor death, nor principalities, or nothing can snatch you from the Father's hand. You are his. And to God be the glory for that. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious Lord, we, we thank you. And Lord, we ask that you would give us the courage to walk with your Son in faithfulness. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, give us wisdom to recognize the temptations that would lead us astray from a life of faith. And grant us the power to resist them. And as we move through this next 40 days of Lent, Lord, help us to, to recognize that the way of the cross is the way to life eternal in your heavenly kingdom. And we ask this and we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us rise. and Let us uh, confess and proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son. Please be seated. At this time, friends, we will receive the offering for the continued building of our Lord's kingdom.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you give us. And Lord, we gladly now give back a portion for the continued building of your kingdom. Amen. Friends, if you're able, please rise. As we have the honor and the privilege now to go to the creator of all things, the one who gives us everything that we need. We have those in our lives that are struggling. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your neighbor, it's your family member, maybe it's that stranger on the street. But let us now go to our Lord with those desires of our heart. Almighty and eternal God, we are so grateful that we could gather together today to offer you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we thank you for the temptations that we endure each and every day, for it makes us stronger. Lord, help us to recognize these temptations. Help us, through the power of your word, to resist the tempter that, Lord, when we are confronted, that we can look evil square in the face and proclaim your word and proclaim the victory that we received on the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you and we just, just offer you praise and grace and mercy for the love that you have shown upon us. For this church that we gather together, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our our, our staff, our teachers, our students, all of our members, all of our guests. Lord, we pray that through these 40 days of Lent that you would continue to draw us ever closer to you through your word, through your sacrament, through that person to our left and to our right. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we are safe, that our military, our police, our first responders, all of those that have put their life on the line for us, Lord, we thank you and we pray, Lord, for their safety to return them home to their families. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for all of the veterans that had served us, many of which never returned home. We pray for their families. And we pray, Lord, that through faith in Jesus, that we all can share this gospel to all who need to hear it. And Lord, as we gather together today, we thank you for all all of those in our lives, many of which need your touch of healing, your touch of guidance, or just simply need to know that you are there. So, Father, we raise to you this morning all of those on our prayer list. We pray for Nancy and for Angela and for David, for Joe. We pray for Phyllis and Dottie. Lord, we pray for Abram and Jonathan and Danielle. We pray for Chuck and for Jan. We pray for Steve and for Francis. Lord, we raise to you Travis and Stephen. Lord, we pray for Nancy and Ivan. We raise to you this morning, Lord, Bob and Sadie and Jan and Harley and Haley. Lord, we are so grateful for Tom and for Pat being here today. We pray for them. We pray for their health. We pray for Wayne and we pray for Lynn. And Lord, this morning we raise to you Janet and Bill, Vera, and Sandra and Betty. Lord, there are so many in our lives that need your touch, whether it is a, a job or, or a health issue or a financial issue or a relational issue. Lord, in the quietness of our hearts, receive these names. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the family of Jeff Hooper, who you have called home to, to glory. Lord, we pray for all of those that are experiencing the pain of losing a loved one that need the comfort that can only come from you at a time like this. So, Lord, please comfort and give peace to those who mourn the loss of a friend or a family member in which you have called home to glory. And gracious Lord, we pray for your mercy to be given on all of these prayers and that you receive the unspoken prayers that remain on our heart as we come to you in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father.
I pray this week as you go out, when you are confronted by the tempter, and you will, that you remember your best weapon is the word of God. It is your faith in Christ Jesus that will sustain you. But also us, if you need help, you need that prayer, you need that person to lean on, please make the call. Let us know, because I can speak from experience this week. It, it's a wonderful gift. So this week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now thank we all, our God. Friends, go in peace and serve the Lord.